both Democrats and Republicans have been criticizing Senator Elizabeth Warren due to a question she asked during the Senate impeachment trial. Now, we all know there was a vote that took place today where the majority of Republicans voted against allowing for witnesses in the Senate impeachment trial, which doesn't really make it much of a trial. And so Warren wanted to make a point about the legitimacy of this so called trial in asking her question. Without further ado, let's see what she had to say. Question from Senator Warren is for the House managers. At a time when large majorities of Americans have lost faith in government, does the fact that the Chief Justice is presiding over an impeachment trial in which Republican senators have thus far refused to allow witnesses or evidence contribute to the loss of legitimacy of the Chief Justice, the Supreme Court, and the Constitution? My favorite part Whoops. is he he takes uh, several seconds after reading that <laughs> with like you know his pursed lips and you can tell he's yeah. a little irritated at the question, mm -hmm. but I think that it's a perfectly legitimate question. Now, obviously, she's putting the onus on him, and maybe you can make an argument that that's unfair. But he's presiding over this, uh, you know, this ridiculous non-trial uh, that is not going to lead to a just outcome, mm -hmm. and. The fact that there aren't witnesses allowed is, I mean, it's just wrong. It's wrong, and he knows it. I mean, he, as a Supreme Court, as as, as yeah. a big part of the Supreme Court, he understands that this is not a real trial, and you're not getting the actual evidence, including the testimony of John Bolton, who was his national security advisor, and who was involved in these conversations. You're not getting his testimony in the middle of this trial. That's Insane, and so I have no problem with her asking that question. But you know, a bunch of people are like, "Oh, how dare you!" And I'm going to give you Adam Schiff's response in just a minute. But I wanted to get your thoughts. Uh, you know, being a lawyer, and then in addition to that, just knowing everything about our government, how it should work in terms of justice and you know trials and whatnot, it's just so important to ask these questions because these are questions that go to the foundation of our democracy. And I know a lot of people; it might make them uncomfortable. Because this is reality, because this is a real consequence in terms of the people losing any kind of faith in the judiciary by having the chief just, chief justice um, preside over this non-trial that's not actually in the pursuit of justice. And you know, Chief Justice John Roberts, he should know that, right. and you know he knows that. It's just unfortunate that he's willing to continue to be a part of this without calling it out, uh, because you know maybe his side will win. It made me yeah. look. Look, this game is rigged. Um, this is this is not a trial. This is not legalistic as far as anything that I know about that, and it and everything that I know about it. Um, this was this was this was set up from the beginning, much like we saw um, with involving the Supreme Court with Merrick Garland back right. in the day, right? So this is a this is a clown show here, and so you know um, maybe on a personal level, this wasn't as nice to. Uh, Chief Justice John Roberts as it should be. But overall, the question is worth asking, right? Because at least she gets to ask the question and the question becomes part of our consumption as American citizens, trying to understand what the heck is going on here. Why are our institutions so corrupted by corporate money and politics? And right. this is, and this is, um, I mean, we saw, for example, with Mitt Romney, you know, these guys are horse trading with deciding who's not gonna, you know, who's gonna ask for witnesses to have. Yes. They are horse trading, don't, don't look at what Susan Collins or Lisa Murkowski say, look at how they are deciding who will vote in such a way so that they don't cross the so threshold. So they maintain power. Precisely. Yeah. That's what it's really about. Yeah. Their yes, decisions yeah. aren't motivated about uh, motivated by morals, principles, ethics, none of that. Or evidence. Or evidence, <laughs> right? <laughs> it, it, the only thing that motivates them is their desire to maintain power. Yes, exactly. And what's the point in having that power if you can't use it to accomplish what being a senator is supposed to accomplish, right? You're supposed to represent the people of your state, the best interests of the people of your state, even knowing that taking a leadership role and doing something unpopular could hurt your political career, right? Yeah. But it's the right thing to do. Yeah, because also it's your job. That's right. what's killing me with all these people. None of them are doing their job. Yeah. And if all you had to do is do your job, the system would work as it should. Right. And so I've had to check out of this stuff for my own mental health because just watching the yeah. deterioration of our democracy and also watching these people just, they really are tearing apart our system. Definitely. And if it doesn't fall apart this time, this will become the model and then it will fall apart. So I wanna show you how Adam Schiff, 
one of the impeachment managers uh, yeah. reacted to Warren's question. And then I wanna talk about this nonsense call for civility because I think that's really at the heart of what we're seeing here. Take a look. I would uh, not say that it contributes to uh, a loss of confidence in the Chief Justice. I think the Chief Justice has presided admirably. And then he continued to say, yes, we are a more than fallible democracy and we don't always live up to our ideals. But when we have a president that demonstrates corruption of his office, unlike other countries, there's a remedy. I don't think a trial without witnesses reflects adversely on the chief justice. I do think it reflects adversely on us. I think it diminishes the power of this example to the rest of the world. So. But he's presiding over it, so he's part of this, right. right? And so he had no problem admonishing both sides, drawing this false equivalency between Democrats and Republicans in the Senate impeachment trial. We know which side is doing its best to help cover up the criminal behavior of Donald Trump. And that's the Republican side. And they're doing it for their own political careers. They're doing it because they're cowards and they don't want Trump to put out a nasty tweet about them and have Trump's mob go after them. That's really at the heart of all of their decision making here, their own self interest. But maybe that's the reason why they have such empathy for Trump. I mean, what Trump did was illegal according to the Government Accountability Office, which released a report on his criminality. But maybe they understand how personal interests and the desire to maintain power trumps everything else. Absolutely, because they may be guilty of it or may become guilty of it at some point in time, and they don't wanna be held responsible for that. Right. And it's just, it's really sick, these calls for civility. Mm -hmm. In part, you know, I've been watching some older films, you know, from back in kind of, well, I guess they depict things back in the 17, 1800s. And, mm. you know, the British were always about being civil, be civil, <laughs> be civil. It's like you only want people to be civil when you're trying to rule and govern them without being just. And while they like, call get them out of here, because yes. otherwise they wouldn't be incivil. Yeah. They're only, you know, yeah. uprising because things are bad, things yeah. are right. wrong. So, so, what do you do? So, as the president breaks laws and he finds ways to get foreign countries involved in our democratic process yeah. to you know skew the results in his favor what are you supposed to do like smile politely and ask him please stop no i mean you, one one needs to be confrontational and direct and call you things out that is actually civility because it's actually the good it, it's you're fighting for the good of everybody i mean we could call the british system civil while they were colonizing yeah. black and brown people all over the world good point um, yeah. and you know what it's 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 really important that we, that we are direct. I mean, look what Lamar Alexander came out and said, right? Mm -hmm. He said, "Oh, I'm going to vote against having witnesses there." Not, and, and then he said, "It's he he said he basically acknowledged that Trump committed a, a, a crime, but he said, oh, like let's just kick it to the ballot box." You know, do you do you see this is an abnegation of duty? Yes. And I hope all of these people lose not because they feared Trump, but because they took the wrong side on in history in this Absolutely. historical moment. Yeah. Don't miss your chance to win a trip to Los Angeles and have dinner with. With Jank, John, and me. Just head to tyt.com slash dinner in LA to register to win. Sign up for a free aspiration spend and save account. Then you just register your eligibility and swipe your aspiration card daily on purchases to gain entries. Not only are you entering to win a trip to Los Angeles and dinner with TYT hosts, you're also not depositing your hard earned money into fossil fuel exploration or production. As a friendly reminder, even if you already have an aspiration account, you must still register for eligibility into the sweepstakes.